Well, they're going to try to beat Kareem Schroeder once again, who certainly folks in this area are well aware of, not only because of her college days playing with BU, but then last year the PHF goal of the year with the Boston Pride. And Aaron Frankel on the other side for Boston getting the start. This will be her sixth appearance of the season. Boston, who allows the fewest shots of anyone in the PWHL. They're way up in terms of their margin of shots, but sometimes they haven't won those games, and we talked a lot about that with Courtney Kessel this week. We'll see how it plays out. And we appreciate you joining us here. New York in the white sweaters, Boston in the home greens. And off we go with the top line for New York on the ice with Levis, Carpenter, and Abby Rock, who's coming off a strong game again. Last time out, though, that was a couple of weeks ago. Levis coming back in, got some space, tried to knock something towards goal, but it's easy enough for the former Northeastern goaltender, Aaron Frankel. Yeah, Downey Landry, that hat trick, two of those she created for herself, two unassisted goals as part of that, that hat trick. And one was she forced a turnover, put it right into the back of the net. She's an opportunistic scorer. That was really the other side of the coin. We talked about Boston out shooting New York in that game, but there were a couple of key turnovers that credit to New York they took advantage of each time. Yeah, they were they were they're opportunistic, like I mentioned. Their firepower comes mostly on that top line, but then you see later in the lineup a lot of sneaky scorers. Wow, what a chance for Jaguar, which hits off the post, got over that right shoulder of Frankel, and New York pushing here early. Zandy Hart from the wall. That got knocked off the skate of Hillary Knight for Boston. Yeah, Elizabeth Jaguar is someone who I got a lot of time in college watching her play for Clarkson. She's someone that when she's on the ice and when you're uh, an ECAC team back when she was playing in Clarkson, you knew you had to game plan for her and you just saw her ring the post. Alina Mueller, though, came off the ice on that last shift, a little bit shaken up, and it looks like she's going to head down the tunnel. And that's a big loss for Boston if she's going to miss any time. Miller, who's Boston's leading scorer this year. A soft win for Boston, the offensive end. Really, all the pressure has been down the other end so far in the first minute plus of this game. And Boston already in trouble. They they lost Sophie Shirley to injury after last game, so she's not in the lineup. And they added a little bit of depth with Susanna Tapani in center, but Mueller is such an elite center for them. Pass goes to the outside from LaBelle. Well set up, but the shot missed wide. Let's stay in the zone here. That was Ella Shelton who had the opportunity. Top scoring defenseman of the PWHL this year. North Cross trying to dig it out in the corner. Well, we talked with both coaches this week about the start to the games in New York. Well, it's only a couple of minutes so far. He's got to be pretty pleased with what they've shown on the ice so far. There's Carpenter who brings it in. And just as we mentioned, that Carpenter-Keller matchup on display as Keller takes the puck away, tries to come through center. So Boston trying to find their way through so far. A lot of possession for New York, and even here with just a little bit of pressure, puck coming back in on Frankel, who restarts it out wide. Still not a lot of quality scoring chances, only one shot on goal credited in the game so far. And Skowski brings it in for Boston. Bouncing puck. Darkangelo had a piece of it momentarily. But Jade Downey-Landry get off his skate trying to bring it out. There is Chloe Arard. Goes wide for Eldridge. We talk about this New York team and their scoring is Downey-Landry nearly had a takeaway and needed to wait for help. Eldridge. Carpenter, Shelton, as we've talked about, three of the top six scorers in the PWHL. And remember, that includes the fact that there's other teams who have played a lot more games than New York so far. Yeah, and Jesse Eldridge and Alex Carpenter not on the same line today, but when they are on the same line, it's very formidable. They've done something similar to Boston. They've moved their threats to different parts of the lineup to try to make it a little bit harder in terms of matching up. Another chance here, right through the slot, and Frankel had to get a piece of it. Kayla Vespa coming right down Broadway. Frankel's had a decent amount of work so far in the first four plus minutes. No score in New York and Boston. Second meeting of the season between these two teams, second of five scheduled this year. Well, Mueller is back into the game after briefly going down the tunnel, so great to see for Boston. 
That's huge for them. She's been their best player so far through the early parts of this season. There's Lauren Gable, leaves it for Mueller. Her vision so special on the ice. Yeah, that's what makes her so great on the power play as well. And, and she's so good at winning face-offs. Uh, so she contributes in so many different ways, gets a lot of ice time. There is Jaguar who got pinned in, and Mueller starts the rush back the other way. Gerard Y, that's deflected up into the netting. Good positioning that time by Taylor Baker. We're going to take a look at what caused Alita Mueller to get shaken up earlier in the period. She was traveling through the neutral zone. Looked like she accidentally caught the knee there of Jesse Eldridge, and so she spun out of it. Probably a stinger right there to the leg, and took a little bit of time. Went down the tunnel, but came back only a few minutes later. Quickly back out on the ice, which obviously is huge for Boston's offense. There's Franken shot, missed wide. There's this pass maybe as much as anything as Norcross picks it up. Behind the net for New York. Captain Zandy Hart starts it out. Good positioning there by Franken defensively to prevent Jill Saunier from getting in deep. Saunier is returning today for the first time since January 10th for New York. Squirts free to LaBelle. Another big hit by Fratkin. She's probably the most physical player for this Boston team. She always has been in college and the PHF, but this league in particular is good for her because she's allowed to be a little bit more physical without getting quite as penalized. Yeah, we talked to some of the players about the adjustments you have to make with some of the rules allowing for a little bit more physicality here in the PWHL. Here comes New York back in. Pass goes wide. That got deflected before it could get in. Peyton Levis was wide on that opportunity on this Rock, Carpenter, and Levis line for New York, which has been very good in the early going. Gable starts it out for Boston. Pass was a little bit behind Girard. And Brooke Hobson back to get it for New York. Mueller, you saw two defenders immediately come on Mueller. And I think we're going to see a lot of that over the course of this game. Eldridge comes in, down for Downey, Landry, a good backhand try, stopped by Frankel. And it springs Boston back the other way. Three on one, maybe three on two. Mueller over, Gable kick, saves Schroeder. That's a great try by Gable. And Mueller, of course, always going to lay that pass perfectly flat on the ice. Slides it over just in time for Gable to have a chance at a, a nice opportunity. Was looking to go five hole. First shot on goal the game for Boston after the first five went to New York. And the first high flying sequence back and forth in the early going here first period. Yeah, that was probably the best chance though. There hasn't been a lot of plays made on the rush. That was the first real opportunity Boston has had in that category. Boston power play still looking to find their grouping as well. Just two power play goals, but maybe more importantly, the fewest power play attempts of any team in the league, whereas New York's been pretty good on the penalty kill. Both these teams are very good on the penalty kill so far. And it's early, Bridget, but kind of a sneaky chance to change some momentum here for Boston. And they were looking for another penalty there as Brandt was taken down as she went into the zone. So it looked like maybe it was going to be a five on three. This Boston power play has so much firepower that even though they're only they're below 10% on the season so far, it's not going to stay like that throughout the year. There's four teams in this league that are below 10%, and that's not how the power plays are going to stand. So it's one of the things that people are just feeling out in this new league, how to get the personnel. And remember, these teams were put together not that long ago, so just getting the right unit, getting the right movement on the power play is still a work in progress. Keller starts the rush, second unit on with Rattray. Centers a pass for Marvin looking for a backhand, but Downey Landry comes in, sweeps it aside, and starts the rush the other way for New York. Hobson chasing after it. Sydney Morin comes around. It's also interesting to see how aggressive teams have been on the penalty kill so far, with, of course, the jailbreak rule in the PWHL this year. If you score shorthanded, that releases your penalty as well. Chance here for Boston to set up. Morin comes over near side. Down low for Gable. They're looking for their first really good chance here. That got in from Morin. And Schroeder knocks it aside to the far corner. 25 seconds left on the penalty time. Morin again. Once again, it's Gable face off dot. Working away from Norcross. Throws it on with traffic there. And then there was a backside chance for Marvin to get a stick on it, but it was just underneath. 
Rattray comes around towards center. Leaves it for Gable. Trying to get it through, and it did get through with a lot of traffic in front of Schroeder, but not on goal. Yeah, Gigi Marvin, one of the players out in front trying to screen Schroeder. That's one of the points of emphasis for Boston today. They need to get a better net front presence than they did last time. That'll lead to those higher quality scoring chances. I thought that they had a lot of good possession time on that power play, but they didn't produce those second chance opportunities. And you saw Vespa come right out of the box, but there was nothing there on the other side. So certainly generating there for Boston. Three shots on goal in the power play, but 0 for 1 to start. And we remain scoreless with under, coming up on nine to go here in the first period. Eldridge plays it in the backhand, looking for Emma Woods, trying to come to center, but could not get beyond Emily Brown. Brown comes all the way through, but how about the speed of Eldridge to come back into that play, take the puck away for New York. Eldridge off the wall. Got it forward for you, Shiger. See Girolamo back to get it for Boston. So we'll see if that power play starts to even out the ice a little bit, even though Boston didn't find the back of the net, but certainly had chances. There's a stretch pass for Mueller that nearly worked, if not for the New York captain, Downey Lin or excuse me, Zandy Hart, who made a good job coming back into the play. Yeah, Mueller almost was able to squeeze by just in the nick of time, but she ran into one of the best defensemen in the league. Carpenter swatting at it. Frankel went for it, but it was over her glove. Here's Gable who picks it up in the corner. Abby Cook making her Boston debut today. As you said, Cook, who scored a goal against Boston earlier this year for Minnesota when the trade happened earlier this week. First ever in PWHL history. Keller walks the line away from Downey Landry. That one got through wide with Brant putting on pressure in front. Jamie Bourbonnet lifts it to center. Good to see Jamie Bourbonnet was okay after she got shaken up towards the end of the, that last game before the break. She took a hit into the end boards, was slow to get up, but it actually sparked her to play maybe her best period of the season. Coach Howie Draper told us that it really added a fire to her game and that she's one of the underrated players on this team. Downing Landry back in. That got knocked down but came dangerously through the slot momentarily before Boston's back on it the other way. Ratre coming in. That's a tough angle shot. Hit the crossbar. What an effort there by Ratre to stay on possession as long as she did with pressure against her. Comes free. Chance for Healy. Walking away from Eldridge. And Eldridge plays a pretty good defensive forward as well. Lifts it to center. 6.27 remaining first period. No score. New York and Boston here at the Sangus Center in low. Archangelo comes in. That's a quick shot that had Schroeder kicking it aside to the near wall. Sandy Hart and LaBelle is back there for New York. So it feels like that power play did generate some of the momentum for Boston almost kind of gives you that step back into the game that they needed after the first five shots on goal belonged to New York. I think they were gaining that momentum just before they went to the power play as well. That's where we saw that chance off the rush. The penalty was drawn just about 30 to 60 seconds after that. So it's just allowed Boston to keep that pressure going forward. Norcross works it back for a little bit of a reset here as Bourbonnet brings it in. Pass comes through the middle with Madison Parker. Sets up Hobson, back for Parker. Gable the closest to her. Hobson, tough angle, was wide all the way. With Gerard and Parker first over for it. Bourbonnet walks the line, throws it on with pressure in front. Frankel doesn't have it. Right on the side of the net, they score! Emma Woods found the rebound. And after six shots in a row on goal, the other way for Boston, it's New York who takes a 1-0 lead.
This is really tough for Erin Frankel. She has to make this first stop, but then she drops the rebound out in front. So you see her, she's looking for it. It pops off the pads, and it's Woods that finds it first. And really, Frankel was already down out of position a little bit, not back towards her cage on the top of the crease. She wasn't able to slide back to the post in time, and so that gives Emma Woods that opportunity, her second goal of the season. And looking at it at first live, I was wondering if maybe there was contact with the goalie, but you can see on all those replays, it was a clean goal. There's no chance for Boston to challenge this for, for anything goal interference wise. So it is the second goal of the season for Emma Woods. She's been important on this team too. She's the third line center in today's game, but she's someone who her coach told us has been kind of a teacher, a, a good communicator with some of the younger players that she plays with, including Elizabeth Jaguer, who's playing to her right wing tonight. Kind of a little bit of a, a mentor. Well, that sequence felt a lot like game one in the sense of, now let's not forget as that puck comes bouncing free dangerously. So with Sommier in the area, and she's still on it. Flips it over top, but nobody was there. Would have been a heady play, but. Nobody there to receive it. But all of those chances in a row for Boston, and then it's New York who comes back and scores the game opening goal, very similar to what we saw in the first meeting well, between these two teams. <laughs> we saw Jamie Lee Rattray hit the crossbar on the other side of the ice, and it looked like Boston was going to take the lead on that, but nope, right back the other way. So Woods gets the goal, her second of the season, assist to Bourbon, her third of the year. And Packer as well with her first point of the season. Abby Rock plays it around. Here is Alex Carpenter. Slides across for Zandy Hart. Throws it on, looking for a tip. Rock was in front. And then a chance for Levis after the rebound off the left pad of Frankel nearly went, but underneath her stick. Teresa Schopsel. Backs it out to center. Brandt, nice little touch pass to Keller. Megan Keller couldn't come through. There are four white sweaters right there against Keller. And Bourbonnet coming up with some speed. Goes wide. Bourbonnet tried to center. Excellent defensive play by Fratkin to take away the passing lane. Yeah, Boston didn't do enough to slow down that transition, so it ended up with a chance on the rush, but Fratkin timing that dive perfectly, blocking it from going on Frankel. Down to three minutes remaining here in this first period. And a 1-0 lead for New York. Downey Landry's pass got the stick of DiGirolamo. Downey Landry back on it. That's deflected up into the net. Head coach Howie Draper with us. Howie, uh, coming in off the long break, how have you thought your start's gone so far? Uh, well, I knew that we had to have a, a good start. Boston's already played a game, and I really like how we've come out of the gates here. I don't think any rest coming into this game, and rest always does help your players. Some of them didn't get that much of a rest, though, when they went up to play for, for Canada, USA in the rivalry series, as well as some other international games as, as well. So uh, it was really just about getting back to practice, getting the team back together. I know it, it's been a little bit frustrating for some players because they've had the all-star break, they've had the international break, but they're really just so excited to be part of this PWHL season that they want to focus on that. Here's Knight who comes all the way in. Another good defensive play. This time it's the other way with Zandi Hart taking away the opportunity from Hillary Knight. She heads back towards the bench now. She took a big check into the end boards. Downey Landry plays it around. 2.14 remaining first period. 1-0 New York on the Woods goal. I wouldn't say Boston has had a bad start at all though. So you you see Howie Draper telling us he likes New York start, but Boston has to be encouraged by those opportunities. They had one off the side of the goal, one off the crossbar. They had two good chances off the rush. Here's Jaguar, plays one towards the slot. And, and I think that's a theme that you've seen from New York here. Just get the puck towards the net, get the puck to the slot, see if there's a bounce somewhere. And that's how the first goal happened. Yeah, that's how a lot of goals get scored, especially uh, when you're trying to find that first goal. Vespa throws it on. That was blocked. Stays in the zone for now with Bourbonnet. Throws it behind for Vespa. Now pinned in by Healy for Boston. 
Woods tried to knife it around on a backhand. And it was started out by Dark Angelo, and here is Brandt waiting for help. Centers up a pass. Dark Angelo shot just missed live. Yeah, this is the fourth line for Boston, but they they have such great depth on this team. This is a good energy line. Might be just what Boston needs right now. Gerard got upended a little bit in the corner. So we head under a minute to go in this first period. one nothing lead New York as Mueller comes in with speed. Could not initially get around Ellis Shelton though. Another setup from Keller just missed wide. Knight trying again with the tip. Mueller was there, but then couldn't reach for it. It's Shelton found that rebound first. I made a good play to box out Mueller. Another setup here for Knight throws it on. I don't think she got everything on it. And Schroeder was there with 29.3 seconds to go here in the first. Hillary Knight's going to be a little bit upset with how this shot ended up going. She did have space to shoot this in the net, and she did have a step to take and get more on it if she was able to. So we'll, we'll have a chance to look. You see two shots by Mueller, and then at the tail end of that play was the the chance by Knight. She she had space to shoot it, and she had that top blocker side corner open in the net, but couldn't get it elevated. We talked about how Boston has kind of been mixing and matching, and do you have Mueller and Knight together? Do you separate them? That was kind of in the middle of the chain, so they both happened to be on the ice at the same time, and it nearly led to their first goal. Knight flips it on, stick to side by Schroeder with under 10 to go here in the first period. And you see how effective that combination can be together. Absolutely. So it's so tempting to go back to that with a, with a line combo. Alex, we talked this week about the start. What did you like about how your team jumped out in this game? Yeah, I thought we did a really good job coming off a couple weeks without games. Uh, you know, we're just looking to continue that in the next two periods. Do you think that you were able to take a little bit of momentum off of that penalty kill? Yeah, definitely. I think anytime you get a big penalty kill, uh, you know, it propels your offense. So uh, hopefully we don't have any more, but uh, that was good to see us in the first period do that. In terms of adjustments for the second period, what are you looking at to do differently in the second? I think we're looking to get bodies to the net and get pucks to the net. Uh, we were pretty perimeter that period, and uh, yeah, we're just looking to get some more shots. All right, thank you, Alex. Thank you. I am looking for Boston in this second period to to really start to, to put a little bit more pressure on because you saw at the end of the period a chance by Knight. I think she's someone who can get going here as the game goes on. She only has one goal this season, and she has so much more to give for Boston. And Jamie Lee Rattray as well. I, I feel like she's been playing so well. Looking to get that second unit going. Alex Carpenter, obviously when you have her on your power play, you're going to put her out there as much as you possibly can. You'll watch her work here on this top power play unit. So New York will set up after the holding penalty very early in the second period. Bourbonnet walks it over to Shelton. Bourbonnet's back on it. Tried to go cross-ice pass for Rock. Leaves it for Bourbonnet with a lot of space. Comes in on the shot. It got deflected to the near side. Abby Rock picks it up once more. Here is Alex Carpenter with some space. Try to pass that hit off the skate of Emily Brown for Boston. And Carpenter back on it. Bourbonnet thought about the one-timer. Instead switches spots with Carpenter. Throws a cross-ice pass for Rock. Couldn't quite complete it. And Boston is back out two on two. Nothing to do but dump it in for Gigi Marvin. And remember, this Boston penalty kill is really strong. They're the only team in the league with two shorthanded goals, so two jailbreak goals on the year. Number 17 and number 20 both out on the ice. Gerard and Brandt, the two players with those jailbreak goals. Including having one on Wednesday in the game against Toronto. And that was Brandt's. Both of them were on the ice for, for both of those goals. Two of the best penalty killers in this league. Something couldn't handle the puck, and here is Gerard back out. Taylor Gerard, again, tend to be a little bit more aggressive here. Gerard told us how much she likes playing penalty kill minutes. Not that she wants to be on the penalty kill that much, but she likes playing it when it happens. And she told us that the dynamic is different with that new rule. She's allowed to be a little bit more offensive minded, and it, you kind of feel like the hero when you go down the other end of the ice. You get to celebrate with the player coming out of the box. There is Hobson. A lot of time here for the setup from Jaguar. Gave it over for Woods, up high. That was blocked by Keller. Who went up the ladder to block that shot off the right shoulder with nine seconds remaining on this penalty time. And Keller swipes it away. So a good penalty kill for Boston. And the penalty kill has been the defining feature on both power play opportunities so far. 
Beller tried to play a pass. Coming right off the bench and a change for DiGirolamo. One shot officially on goal in that power play for New York. Each team 0 for 1. Sometimes it's kind of odd when you get the power play so early in a period like that. But we'll settle it now here to the second. And I think they, they could have done more down low. They they didn't find those low seam passes. They, they got one across, it didn't connect. And that's really where you want to be playing in the power play. Came through to Brown, who holds the line, throws it on, that got knocked down, rebound, try, hit the post. Second one of the game for Boston, that was Hillary Knight with a golden chance that just missed. Another chance for DiGirolamo, comes free at center. And actually, I think Knight reaching for that puck. First, the one-timer controlled by Schroeder from Rattray. But Knight was kind of reaching for that puck, didn't realize there was an open lane for Brown to come in with momentum and ended up kind of preventing the opportunity that could have been there. Knight looks like she's going to score tonight. I, I, I've does. seen a few moves from her at the end of the first period and now in the second. Right off the blocker side post, she gets her own rebound. but. Man, you hate to hear that sound of the pipe when it's on your offensive end of the ice. Just look at almost perfectly inside that post. She had her beat to the blocker side, but, and that's the kind of season it's been so far for Hillary Knight. She's just been a little bit snake bitten. She's been in the right scoring areas. She has one of the best shots in the entire league. Her, her coach, Courtney Kessel, tells us she has the best shot in the entire league. And I think a lot, of people, world, right? a lot of people would agree with her on that. So only one goal to show for it this season. It's almost a two on one with Stopsel crashing the net, but Marvin shot controlled by Schroeder. Trusting that the chances are there and finding the, you know, the want to tweak as much as you can to do whatever you can to find those goals when Boston right now, who still is scoring more than anyone else in the league, but feels like there's even more there as that chance came through and it brings Carpenter back the other way. Leaves it behind. That shot's kicked aside by Frankel. Peyton Levis following the play got the shot. So four minutes into this second period, New York had the power play opportunity and then a ton of attempts for Boston. Yeah, four shots this period already for Boston. New York coming back in. Behind for Rock. Keller got a stick on it before it got through to Frankel. And here is Lauren Gable out wide. Gable one on one. Save up top by Schroeder. And so pushing and shoving after the whistle. Gable taking a little bit of a bump there. Actually, the first meeting between these two teams, there was a lot of extracurricular activity after the play as we'll get a look at this rush for Gable taking on the defender one on one. Taylor Baker skating backwards, trying to get the stick on it, but she cleanly gets the shot off. Schroeder able to make the stop. And that's an easy stop for Schroeder. You're going to need to get traffic out in front, or you're going to need to get some passing going. Obviously, she didn't have a trailer there to, to help her out, but. Good work by Gable to find that face off before it's knocked out to center. So Boston with both official scoring chances of the period so far. Had that post mixed in as well. Sonia bringing it back the other way. And for Sonia, her first goal, first game, I should say, since January after missing a couple. Warren plays it in. Mueller is down below the dot, comes all the way free to Gerard. Waiting, tough angle, was looking to set up Mueller, then Gerard came back into the play, got a piece of it, but it ended up behind. Taylor Gerard got elevated in this lineup. She started out on the fourth line for this Boston team. She's right now playing with Alina Mueller, which listed as a second line, really more of a first line with, with Lauren Gable and Mueller next to her. So she's really been elevated because they trust her playmaking ability, her defensive ability too. That one comes through, kick save Schroeder, rebound comes free and Brown shot was blocked. That was Packer who got in the way of Brown and then a big hit by Good effort from Joanna Fellman on the near side, knocking down Wenskowski for Boston. I'm a little bit surprised that we haven't seen as much physicality as we did in the last meeting between these two teams. Starting to come a little bit maybe on that shift, and we'll see if that builds. Over the six-minute mark, second period. 
Again, it's turning back to Boston. Rattray in, just missed. And Keller stops it in the line, comes free right in front. Knight was trying to get a stick on it. I'm not sure she ever quite did with Schroeder deep in her net. Another turnover here for Keller. Throws it across, comes free Rattray. An excellent play by Chloe O'Reilly to get her stick in the way, and that was not on goal. What a great shift by this newly formed top line with Rattray, Knight, and Tapani. And now a penalty coming up, and that's one of those after a long shift. This is a penalty that comes off of all of that pressure, and you start to reach a little bit. Yeah, just get the stick right there in between the legs of Keller, and really accidental. Yeah, you are trying to reach, you, and she does find herself out of position a little bit behind Keller, trying to take the puck away, but getting the stick in there, costing New York their second penalty of the game, and I did think Boston's first look on the power play was good. I, I think Hillary Knight might have a, a few things to say here on this power play. Well, it, they did get three shots on that first power play, but most was actually the second unit. So we'll see how this first unit does. Mueller throws it on. That got knocked down in the slot. Abby Rock comes away with it for New York and dumps it out to center. But Keller, a good play, knocks it right down. And quickly back in comes Boston, though Knight blew a tire. And New York this time can knock it all the way down. The interesting thing about this Boston power play is they have two really good net front players on this top unit. Hillary Knight can cause a lot of trouble out in front of goalie. So can Hannah Brandt. Mueller coming through with speed. Gets into the zone and sets up on the far wall. Brandt is down low, back up for Mueller. Keller quarterbacks. Tapani walks in with space. Throws it down low for Hillary Knight. Tapani on this top unit for the first time. Just traded in her second game here with Boston. Pass was behind. Brandt down low with Knight in the bumper. And this is out to center with 108 remaining on this power play time. The trip against Downey Landry. Yeah, Mueller just couldn't quite hold that in at the point. And if you watch close to the net, you could see that both Brant and Knight were switching off, trying to take away the eyes of Schroeder. Here comes Rattray, who brings it in. Boston set up again. Morin shot just missed wide. With Gigi Marvin on the doorstep. Schopsel comes free. Her shot, I think that might have hit her own teammate, Rattray. Setting the screen in front against Schroeder. Schopsel once again. Comes down, up high, blocker to side. And frankly, blocker was way up in the air first before it went softly to the ice. Morin once more, sets up Lauren Gable. Moves away, throws it on with Marvin, wide open on the backside, couldn't connect. 16 seconds to go in the power play. Morin's in, and Schroeder makes the save. And hit the linesman, stays in, maybe one more chance. Healy turns one on, stick save, rebound still loose in front. Tapani finds it, but it's whistled down for a hand pass. So four shots credited to Boston on that power play. And again, I, I know it hasn't scored at the rate that Courtney Kessel wants it to be scoring, but seven shots on two power play chances, the, the chances are there. So both teams with a penalty kill in this period. Shots unofficially in the building are up to 20 to 10 now in favor of Boston. Remember, New York had the first five of this game. Dark Angelo, that went all the way through untouched. There's his bell. Playing her first game for Boston and on her birthday, by the way. She was just signed to the regular roster today. With the injury to Sophie Shirley, an upper body injury. I, I think that Boston has really been the most aggressive team in this league in terms of making moves, signing players off reserve, making trades, moving up the lineup. Rock throws it across, and Jaguar couldn't get everything on it. Not a bad setup, though, from Rock, who feels like she is all over the ice constantly for New York. Gerard thought she had a step. Now Gable comes in. Gable has help behind, comes center. New York stick was in there to poke it to the near wall. And Keller throws it right into the ribs of Baker. Pass out for Eldridge, didn't connect. Boston resets. Half a hockey game gone, 1-0 New York here from the Saga Center. Chance for Gerard. couldn't get the first shot, but got the second one. Loose for Knight, throws it on. Third pipe again, I'm not sure the puck hit that or a player. But another great chance for Knight got taken away. Who's back on it now? 
Keller throws it on with pressure in front, but Schroeder fought it off with Tapani setting a screen. Once again, you feel like Boston has just been right around the net. Lock print pins in Fratkin, another shot, bouncing through, rebound, what a save! Oh my, Aaron Franco! And she's still holding on to it on the ice. Some sticks coming in late, and the players arguing that. Here with Boston head coach Courtney Kessel, and Courtney, we've seen your team get so many shots on goal, so many good opportunities. Is there a little bit of a fear of getting frustrated? What's what's going on to you guys' thoughts on the second and, and moving forward here yeah. with all those opportunities? The energy's been great on the bench. Uh, we just got to keep getting our shots to the net, and I think it's going to fall through. I mean, Schroeder's a great goalie, so we got to get some bodies in front of her, but the energy's great here, so we're ready to go. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. And I think what the conversation was after was, uh, as good as the save was, Frankel thought she had it covered, didn't at first, and they let it go for an extra beat or two. See if New York responds, they do not, because Frankel's there again. If Frankel can steal you a game, we watched her do it in college. She was one of the best goalies to, to ever play in Once that time twice, at Northeastern. Uh, yeah, she is somebody that Boston brought in early to build their team around out in front of her. And you see it with saves like that. And she's really started to get settled in to this PWHL season. Hasn't had as much work comparatively here. But, but looking at both of those last opportunities, they're so high quality. Look at how close that comes in. It's right at the top of the crease. A diving try by Downey Landry, who had the hat trick in the last meeting between these two teams. Here is Keller, walks in, up high, got the glove on it, did Schroeder, but couldn't squeeze it. But Abby Rock was right there momentarily before Gable took it away and dumps it back in. 8.22 to go, second period. It still, somehow, is a 1-0 New York lead in a game that feels incredibly similar to what we saw almost a month ago between these two teams on this ice. With Boston heavily out shooting New York, and New York the team with the lead and eventually the win. Mueller plays it in deep. Good four check here from this line. Through the slot, good read on it by Carpenter. And New York is out two on two. Maybe three on two if they go quickly. Eldridge waits over for Carpenter. It actually hit the skate of Mueller, and she guides it in to her goalie, and here we go. Wow. It looked like a pretty innocent play going into this stoppage, and then you see the tempers heat up. Megan Keller involved in a scrum out in front. She's taller than most players on this league, but uh, you see Abby Rock giving her a little bop on the head there, just uh, playing around with her, but you do not want to mess with either of those players, two of the bigger players in the league. And it, it starts on this opportunity. Mueller did a good job lifting the stick of the player on the opposite side, which was Rock, and then it did go in off her skate, stopped by Frankel, and then you see Abby Rock is such a competitor. She is someone you do not want to go into the boards with. And it looks like that's going to result in uh, penalties, two roughing calls to Rock and Gable. So four on four hockey for two minutes. Gable and Rock each get roughing calls. And those are two very different size players. Rock is uh, one of the heaviest players in the league. Gable really small. Tapani plays it around. Hillary Knight collects off the wall. That comes free. Chance for Di Girolamo is blocked. Bourbonnet with a great block shot. And for all of these opportunities, New York is doing a pretty good job of blocking shots here. There's still 1-10 remaining in four-on-four four time as Boston wins the faceoff. Icing was waved off. Saulnier reaching for it, picks it up, goal line extended, got right in front! And Franco, oh boy, the puck was actually on the other side of the crease when it was whistled down. Franco made the initial stop, but then it kind of sat loose for a moment. The officials lose sight of it, so the faceoff will come to the left side. This is an incredibly strong power move. 
towards the net, but she kind of gets pushed into Frankel by Fracken and Keller. She didn't have much of a lane to avoid this contact, but she stops up, hits the pads, and we'll see the puck was never actually covered up. And that's happened to Frankel a few times. That was how the first goal by New York was scored. It was in the pads, but once again came back out, and Frankel, not usually someone who has trouble with that. It almost looks like she's having trouble finding it when it gets in her pads, and I'm, it's I'm not sure if these are, here. I'm not sure if these are, new pads or her normal pads but she had trouble holding on to rebounds on those pucks that have been on the ice if you from our vantage point i can watch her shaking them out trying to just get used to them trying to figure out what's going on with that equipment i don't know if fratkin has any interest in acting ever but she pulled off a magnificent performance with that puck in her skates I'll ask her. I'll <laughs> ask her. She used to be my broadcast partner, actually, for Hockey East. There so go. she's a good broadcaster as well. Off the wall for DiTirolamo as we play on 6.04 remaining second period. Comes free. Abby Cook blocked. Got it right back with 10 seconds remaining on the four on four. Cook once again. Looking for a tip. Good save, Schroeder. With Mueller getting the tip try from Cook. Thought about it again. We're back to five on five hockey as that deflects over the net. Tapani picks it up here from Austin. Coming right down. Gigi Marvin. It goes across the crease to the far side where Schopsel momentarily had a piece of it. Good four check here though by Boston. It's still in deep. Schopsel gets tied up. Marvin in deep with Downey Landry. How about this four check from Boston? Yeah, they're really not given any room from the boards out. New York finally brings it out with 5.04 remaining here, second period. It is still a 1-0 lead for New York on the goal by Emma Woods at 14.59 of the first period. Keller comes out with speed. Here is Schopsel, end of a long shift. Schopsel throws it on. Schroeder, who is really deep in her net, but no problem. Pass ahead for Eldridge. Would have been offside, had to tag up. Dark Angelo, her shot, kicked aside, rebound low. Schroeder got over. One to nothing, New York over Boston here in the late stages of the second period. Nothing beats watching your favorite team live. Get tickets to PWHL, PWHL games to catch all the action. Visit the PWHL.com slash tickets to secure your seats today. Well, no one has had a hard time finding that website as the crowds have been packed all year long. Another good crowd here at the Sangha Center. And you know what? I the website for merch as well. Every time I go on to try to buy something, it's completely sold out. So <laughs> it has all been picked up. Everybody wants the, the PWHL merch. I was trying to get myself a puck. I uh, haven't been successful in that yet. We'll get someone on that for you. <laughs> 4 17 to go here in the second. one nothing New York. Sandy Hart leaves it behind. Jaguar comes all the way in, throws it on. Not sure that got all the way through or not. It comes free to Shelton who throws it on, just missed. Then goal line extended. Jaguar tried, but Knight quickly got back in position and starts the rush out for Boston. Ratre wins the race, throws it on. Save Schroeder. Another great chance for Hillary Knight denied. That time it rolled the puck up on edge at the last second, so she didn't get a lot on that one as well. It's it's just these little near misses by Knight, these, th these chances that are just not 100% perfect, so she hasn't been able to really pick her spots the way she normally does. There is Brant. As Boston continues to push, that shot got deflected before it was on net for Marvin. Comes to the near side where Marvin Picks it up again. 3.19 to go here in the second. In behind Brandt, looking to center. It was Schopsel coming right off the bench. Pass didn't get through, and Boston has to tag up. Once again, right out of the media timeout, Boston being able to generate their own energy. Here's Abby Rock off the pass from Carpenter. Onside, just missed wide. Carpenter. 
Got to it, was looking for that wraparound move. Geralimo closest to her. Score is slightly different, but it is pretty amazing how this has played out. Maybe not a carbon copy, but pretty close in terms of chances to what these two teams were in the first meeting where New York had the lead and Boston had chance after chance after chance starting in the second. Norcross's shot missed lot. Yeah, this one at least still with in reach for Boston. That last game was a four to one win for New York. So Boston, they have to feel like they're really just one better bounce, lucky bounce uh, away from tying this up. They've had quite a few unlucky bounces, so things get to even out for them at some point, but they've been right in this. And every single game that they've outshot their opponents, though, they've lost. It's kind of, a, it's hard to believe. There's another chance just missed wide. This is a pretty good shift here from New York, right on cue, but that is offside. Jay I Downey Landry pushing back in, though, for New York with under 90 seconds to go. Big hit by Keller. That was perfectly lined up, completely clean, took down Downey Landry right as she tried to enter the zone. And those are the kind of plays that were not allowed in the PHF and not in college, but they're allowed here. Adds a new element to the game. A little adjustment for the players to be sure. As we go under a minute here in the second, Downey Landry leaves behind for Eldridge's try that missed one. I think it makes for a better product. I think that players will tell you the same thing. They get to play with more intensity. Tip try and hit the post, and then Frankel's on top. What a play to dig that off the wall. And a wonderful setup. Just missed again. It was that close to 2 nothing. Wow. That like you said, was so close. That almost went right in between the post and the skate of Aaron Frankel. That is such a quick centering pass and a really smart one as well. Two players, Downey Landry getting a piece on it first and then Morin was trying to nullify the, the second chance, but it, it did hit the post and that one maybe was a lucky bounce for Boston. So to their credit for New York, just as we're having the conversation about the shots, there's been a bunch in a row here for New York in the final 90 seconds or so of this second period as they play with the lead. Rattray did keep it in momentarily, but Bourbonnet brings it out to center. Here is Vespa wide, 20 to go in the period. That was looking for a rebound. Franklin did a good job guiding it to the corner. Bourbonnet again, comes for Vespa, stick save Frankel. Final six seconds of the period. Boston will run it out, and it remains 1-0 New York after two. So we begin this third period. Remember the second period, there was a penalty right out of the jump. Here is Schatzel along the wall. Tried to center up for Brandt, throws it on, bounces all the way through to Keller, who steps into the play offensively. Leaves for Brent. Cross ice pass. Fratkin winds up. Got tipped wide. As Gigi Marvin collects along the far wall. Carpenter does get it out for New York. Here's Rock. Had to wait for her teammates to catch up a touch. Tied up with Fratkin. And Boston's back in. End of a shift here, but still two on two for Gigi Marvin. To just dump it in beyond Hobson and change. For the first 45 seconds gone by here in the third. Trying to take advantage of this long homestand that we talked about. In the midst of six in a row at home, this is game two of a stretch of four in eight days to begin the second half. Brown kicks in. The rebound was loose in the slot, but nobody with a green sweater could touch it. And Downing Landry is out the other way for New York. Comes back center. Pass for Zandi Hart went underneath her stick and then throws it on. Franco got it off the end of her stick. To talk about the, the homestand, they're still looking for their first regulation win in this homestand. They won against Minnesota in the very first game, but that was in overtime, the only goal. That's a great save. Shot kind of came out of nowhere from the slot, and Frankel had to get it with the right path. Another setup. That hit off of Peyton Levis in the high slot. Bouncing around to center. 
New York actually did get on side there, but Levis couldn't follow the play, and it's dumped all the way down the other end. And just to finish that thought, that was the game-winning goal by Hillary Knight, and then followed by two losses, one in overtime and one in regulation during this homestand, so trying to take more advantage of home ice. Turned over to Mueller. Here is Cable. Tough angle shot, rising high and wide of the net. Warren keeps it in, down low for Mueller. Waiting for the setup. Pressure coming from Shelton. What a matchup that is. Mueller against Shelton. In behind the net of Schroeder. It does come free. Backhand try, kick save. Cable had the chance, and Schroeder swatted it away. Another one from Healy got knocked wide to the near side, where the goal scorer Woods comes away for New York. Gable has come that close twice in this game. We saw it in that highlight package from the first period once again there. I think that they've been having a little bit of difficulty, Boston, lifting pucks up off the ice. It, it looks like the intention has been to shoot higher, but they haven't been able to get them over the pads. And a couple of ones that have been up have been too far up. Here is LaBelle, leaves it off the wall. Slap shot sticked aside by Frankel. It was Packer's opportunity, then Norcross got knocked down by Fratkin. And Keller picks it up for Boston. And Skowski, and it roll off her stick back for Hobson. Even start to this third period. With Boston again trailing, there's nearly a takeaway from Norcross. Sandy Hart does manage to dump it in. Rapkin and Keller on the defense pairing. It is brought out by Dark Angelo and Megan Keller. Knocks it in behind Schroeder. G.G. Marvin settles up for Brandt. It comes free to Brown, and that somehow missed everything and ends up wide. A great chance for Emily Brown. Brown looking for her first goal of the season. Has gotten a lot of praise from her coach, Courtney Kessel, on just how professional she's been since joining the team. Here's Gigi Marvin in behind. Boston's really working down low, bringing it back through the slot. Brandt plays it across for Brown. Her shot tough angle didn't get through. Taylor Baker was in the way for New York. And it's three on two back here for New York. Carpenter's shot going across the grain. And it just missed Frankel. It looked like maybe it was actually a pass. Shelton may have come out of the zone. Doesn't end up mattering here. As DiGirolamo is back the other way. So they put Eldridge back on that Carpenter line. That's what you saw there. Carpenter trying to find Eldridge crashing towards the net. On the outside, a bouncing puck off the shot from Healy. Healy once again steps up. Got it away from Eldridge. Here is Knight. Turns it on. No problem that time for Schroeder. A rare instance with no traffic in front and a little bit of a shove after the play as well. Yeah, a little cross check there right after the whistle. We'll take a look at some end-to-end -end action that's occurring here in the start of the third period. We'll look first at this try by Lauren Gable. Gets the puck on the backhand. Looked like it was maybe trying to go five hole, maybe trying to lift it a little bit. And then this, what I thought might have been a pass or maybe a attempted pass off the pads by Carpenter to Eldridge, who she's told us she's found great chemistry with, hasn't played with her much before this season, but someone that she has clicked with immediately. So good to see them able to work together a little bit. I think they like to play together, but they were, to start the game, they were on different lines. As much as we've gone so much of this season, it is still so new. They're still experimenting on these lines to be done. As that one rolling free in front of Schroeder, got a second save and then maybe even a third. In behind for Downey Lantry trying to dig it out, and she does, and comes away. The two on two, New York was changing those, so Downey Lantry just takes a shot that was in the skates of Keller. You don't get a lot of second chance opportunities off of Shorter, so Boston trying to put one home there off the pads point blank. There are actually so many legs out in front, it was hard to get a clean shot off. What's his pass stretching for you, Shiger? Collects now away from Fratkin. Shiger got pinned along the wall. Good play by Fratkin. And Lauren Gable brings it out for Boston. Gable decides to shoot, and it's deflected up into the netting with 13.44 to go. Abby Rock got tied up momentarily. There's Felman who plays it down. Yeah, this is certainly for not lack of good chances for Boston. 
and it's just kind of accumulating shots. This is not that. There's been a lot could, of good chances. You can see that if it was just outer, outer perimeter shots, point shots, but these have been in close. These have been uh, in prime scoring chances. The only thing that maybe they could do a little bit better is just taking away the eyes of Schroeder. And she is very good once again. And fans in this region know a lot about her from her play at BU the last year with Boston Pro. Yeah, pass from Rock got knocked down. She also has a first in the PWHL first shutout. That's right. So she's made history as well. Coming off 39 saves against Ottawa in her last game, which again goes all the way back to February 4th. In that game that New York was down 3-0, eventually winning 4-3. And that's something that Howie Draper said we would have liked to have had a chance to build momentum off of that, but instead he hit the break, it kind of kills that. It was really a big character win, and then you you have to take the pause and you you put it in the rearview mirror and aren't able to really draw so much off of it. Chloe Arari had an opportunity for a high slot tip that did not get on goal. And a good job by Gerard, kind of kicking it free. And here is Alina Mueller who came in offside. Gable jumped the gun just a little bit there, and she's upset at the call. She thought she had timed this just right. We talk so much about Mueller's passing ability, it's rightfully so, but it is also pretty amazing to watch just her speed and her stride coming through. I know it didn't end up working out, mounting to anything there, but one of the reasons that she was picked where she was, third overall, and the PWHL draft. And one of the main reasons she was picked that high and one of the main reasons she's adapted so well to this level of hockey is just her. Her intelligence level is, is through the roof. She's someone that off the ice speaks four different languages. I mean, that should kind of tell you a little bit about how quickly she picks things up. Rattray sets up more and with the tip try in front, still loose to the slot and a backhand is stopped by Schroeder. A few really... Great chances out in front of the Boston goal. Hillary Knight's face says it all. How did that not go in? She got another chance on the backhand right on top of the crease. You see her, she's watching the puck, has the eye on it the whole time. Right there was in the low slot. She got the shot on goal, but really hard to get leverage on a shot like that where you're, you're turned to the play, your back is turned to the net. Good news. For Boston, though, on shifts like that, you are seeing those second chance opportunities yeah. come, and, and you're getting good looks off those rebounds. And they're winning faceoffs, which they did here to set up another chance. Megan Keller backing away. GG Marvin cycling in behind with Brandt. Here is Fracken, throws it on, no problem for Schroeder. He's going wide anyway, but decides to glove it. Here is Brandt, turns around, that was blocked. Zandy Hart kind of off her right leg. And New York's got to play this game as that comes free and just missed. Eldridge had a wide open chance. And now New Boston trying to come back the other way. And now it's New York with Eldridge coming in. Got a little bit of a move around Keller, but couldn't control the puck. Bourbonnet comes down, across and hit the post. What a chance for Abby Rock. Rock able to get that up. Had another one just miss high. And now it's Carpenter who picks it up in behind. And that line, just as you talked about, my goodness. That's what they can do. You see Rock with a shot off the post, and then Frankel got a piece of it on the way down to keep it out of the net. But the great passing you see with those three on the ice at the same time. So can New York turn some of the momentum back in a period that has seen seven of nine shots belonging to the home team? There is Packer looking for a teammate, but it was only Boston there with DiGirolamo. Here is Wenskowski, taken away by LaBelle on the near side. And Savannah Norcross. Knocks it in, that is icing against New York with 9.33 to go in the third. And we get a chance to look at another close call here for Aaron Frankel on this play off the post by Rock. 
Bourbon, who has really started to play well as of late, gets this pass all the way through, splits the Boston D, and gets this to Rock on the far side post. She lifts it, getting she got gets the shot off that she wants. She's trying to go over the pad there, and she did beat her, but unfortunately, she didn't beat the post. The post has been a bigger factor than the goal scored in this game. Yeah, so add two to the 29-17 shot total right now. Here's Hillary Knight comes in up high on Schroeder. That or add two to each team on the right. scoreboard. The three could be a three to sure. two game. However, it is Boston still in that hole, so score has held since the first period, and they've been just trying to claw their way back into this game. And now that we're down with under nine minutes to play in the third, a little bit of desperation sinking in. Sometimes that's when players play their best hockey, and there's especially some players internationally playing in gold medal games that understand that more than anyone else. Boston goes back with this Brant Marvin and Shopsil group, which I think has been pretty good today. Listed third on the card. Carpenter skating out with some speed. Alex Carpenter comes in trying to go short side, but Franco read it well. Keller knocks it out and was helped out by Schopsel to get it to center. Down under nine minutes remaining here in the third period from the Sangha Center in Lowell, Massachusetts. A 1-0 lead for New York on Emma Woods' goal. Back at 14.59 of the first period, and New York here is offside. She's been someone that's impressed Coach Kessel since joining the team. She has Boston's first ever PWHL goal back in that first game against Minnesota. Here is Zandy Hart, comes down looking for a tip. That got all the way through. It was Woods who was crashing down the slot. And then Shaguer fired wide. Zandy Hart, back over for Bourbon. It comes to the middle. In the high slot, Shaguer was affected by Brown, who knocks it forward to center. Turned back for Vespa, a little two on one. Ahead for Woods, had to wait for it to stop bouncing before she could get it on her stick. There's that line again, nearly putting it together. This is all the way down the other end, and icing is called. It has felt like, I know that the shots on goal haven't necessarily matched it yet, but it's been a little more even the last few minutes, and now what a chance for New York up by one. Yeah, this is a chance to extend the lead for them as we get a look at that. Yeah, right. Oh, that's a bad one, too. That one, you, you don't like to see plays like that come right up high. I'm not sure exactly what she was trying to do with that stick there in that situation. So uh, she got it up high, and I believe it was on trying to defend Downey Landry, or it might have been Emma Woods, but um, she got it right in along the face, so definitely a high stick, easy call. Sometimes those plays can look worse than they are, but if the onus is always on the player to control your stick. So an obvious call there, and a chance of the power play for New York. Boston can't get it out. Bourbon A holds the line, but this time it's Brandt. Off the takeaway. Brandt's got a shorty already in her last game, and that did it go! Oh my! The horn sounded, but that did not go is the call on the ice. And it's Carpenter back in for Eldridge. Plays it across. Good save, Franco. And a frantic sequence to 6.59 to go in the third. Eldridge across, right on the doorstep. Frankel's there for the moment. Abby Rock tries to set her up, and it's out to center and a breath with 6.49 to go here in the third and 1.10 on the power play. Megan Keller might have been hurt on the end of that play. If that did not go, and we'll obviously get a look at the end of the sequence, what a job by Schroeder to keep it out. Here is Sandy Hart walking down the wall. Bourbonnet sets it up for Rock. Tries Downey Landry, falling down, got it to Sandy Hart, who did get it on goal, but it was kicked away by Frankel. 42 seconds remaining on the power play time in a 1-0 game, New York up. Carpenter waiting. Downey Landry comes to the wall. Out for her captain, Zandy Hart. Bourbonnet, this group's been out there the whole way. Zandy Hart walks in, it's blocked. Gigi Marvin with a block shot. Zandy Hart again over for Bourbonnet. 19 seconds remaining in the power play time. Down low for Abby Rock. Waiting, goes cross ice, Carpenter, her shot up high. Good job by Brown to read it and block it. Carpenter again, six up.
how you play on the penalty kill. Gerard right out of the penalty box. She told us that she doesn't like to take penalties, and the main reason she doesn't like to take penalties is because she likes the penalty kill That's so right. much. So she doesn't want to watch other players out there instead of her. Keller walks down, centers up, backhand try. Brent just couldn't get it on goal. Comes to the near wall. We're down to 5.14 to go here in the third period, folks, and this is still 1-0 New York in the lead. Yeah, Brent, if she had scored on that, would have been the only player to have two jailbreak goals so far That's this right. season. Boston has two. That is the most of any team in the PWHL so far this year. It escaped. Chloe Arard kind of was stumbling back, trying to reach against her momentum. Boston's on it now. Rattray got a piece of it. But Downey Landry turns it back out to center. And here is a momentary two-on-one for New York. Packer throws it on. Stick save, Frankel. Sandy Hart picks it up near side. Bouncing puck for Hillary Knight. And Chloe Arard with 4.27 to go here in the third period. Brought in onside by Rattray. Turned back to center. Well read, though, by Brown. Downey Landry, though, takes it right back the other way, and it's gloved by Frankel. 4.08 to go in the third. In front of a crowd of just announced over 4,000 here at the Saga Center this evening. And four minutes remain in the third period. A 1-0 lead for New York. Boston has been trying to find the equalizer since the 14:59 mark of the first period. It just came about as close as you could possibly come without finding the back of the net. Right now, Ellen Shelton's my, my player of the game. If we <laughs> just for that play, right? Marvin. Steers it along the wall with Brent, who had that opportunity on the shorthanded chance that nearly squared it just a few moments ago. Carpenter brings it out to center. New York has continued to answer well, though. Carpenter got free, throws it towards the net. That is tied up in the skates again of Keller. Sandy Hart tried to get it from Eldridge on a tip. It did not direct on goal, and it's turned back the other way. Abby Rock. Who's still out there at the end of the chain. Centers up, Downey Landry just missed. A great find for Rock, who's played another really strong game here today. Abel forcing it forward. Take it away. New York coming back with Jill Saulnier. Manages to keep possession with 2.46 to go. Now it's a ride as Boston plays it back to center. So late in this game, Eric, I wonder when we'll see Aaron yeah. Frankel start to make a break here. Well, right now, New York's done a pretty good job preventing Boston from getting a ton of possession here, kind of back and forth through the neutral zone. That's well played back in by Bourbonnet. And we're down to 2.16 to go in the third. New York trying for his second win in a row over Boston. The Geralimo's chance deflected off the skate and goes wide. Frankel did not head for the bench there. And good thing, because New York was right back on it. Down under two minutes to go here in the third. Vespa plays it in. Frankel will control it. No whistles in this sequence as well, let alone a chance to pull Frankel. She's at the top of her crease now, waiting for the chance. Boston's on possession. Zandy Hart knocked it down. Frankel heads to the bench. 135 remaining in a 1 0 game and an empty net for Boston. Hillary Knight tried to play a pass to center but got knocked down by Eldridge. This will get across the line, but Icing's waved off. 122 to go. The net is empty. Good pressure here by Boston. Possession free to Schopsel. Plays it across. That gets tied up. Pass back for Schopsel. Couldn't get her stick on it on the backhand. Keller coming around, makes a move around Carpenter. Keller shoots and scores! Megan Keller ties it with 104 to go to third. Megan Keller has done it before. She is such a clutch player. Extra attacker goal, not her first time this season. She had one a few weeks ago. In
similar kind of thing, cycling it up to the point, trying to step in a little bit closer, find a shooting lane. So Keller uses the bodies in front as a screen, uses the New York defenseman Bourbonnet as a screen as well. What a nice wrist shot too. She's such an incredible long range score and you see it there. And Eric, I'm happy about that. I, I was kind of hoping for overtime. I could watch <laughs> another three periods of this hockey game. It's been so good. Just waiting to get everything confirmed, but Megan Keller, and, and you know, how much Courtney Kessel talked about it, right, during your interview? We've got to get traffic in front of Shorter. She's too good, and you can see it coming, cutting across that time that made a massive difference. As Keller finds the back of the net, goal number three this year, point number seven. That's now points in six of nine games for Megan Keller, and we are tied 1-1 with under a minute to go here in the third. And Boston not done yet. Brown leaves it behind. Across for Di Girolamo. Cut into center was Brandt and can only play it in the corner. 41 seconds to go here in the third. Brandt digs it out for Di Girolamo, shoots it on. That was blocked before it could get through. Di Girolamo is right back on it against Jade Downing Landry for New York. With 29 seconds remaining. Keller's goal goes unassisted at 18.56 of the third period and ties it 1-1, down to 17 seconds remaining in the third. Maybe one more try, comes to center, Knight nearly had a lane, but it got tied up in the skates and Downing Landry tried to just guide it into the corner and that will do it. Regulation not enough tonight. It's, it's been such a great game for both teams. Uh, it's not surprising that it went this far into an extra frame. So I don't think really either team has an advantage here in the overtime momentum wise, even though Boston just scored. So five minutes on the timer, three on three hockey. If there is no goal, we will go to a shootout. Brandt creates a turnover, centers up. Diving play by Schroeder with Tapani crashing in. Tapani nearly beat Schroeder to this puck, and if she had, that might have ended the game pretty soon into this extra frame. She went right towards the net, and you'll watch. It's Brent who makes the steal and plays the puck across. Hard to even get that pass in, so Tapani seeing the opportunity to d dive forward and try to get to the puck first accidentally Context yeah, Schroeder in the shoulder. There is no, that is, for the play. Yeah, and and obviously Schroeder, they're gonna check, make sure she's okay, but uh, no penalty, nothing on that that warrants anything. Just a really good hustle play by Brandt and then Tapani. You see the desperation on this first shift already for Boston. So New York with a face off this time. Here is Alex Carpenter. Spins away from Keller, got it across. Chance for Shelton, broken up by Shopso, but still the chance for Shelton to get it on goal, but Franco was there. And now the other way, it's Tapani, all the way into the save by Schroeder. This trio has been effective for Boston. Shopso, an underrated defender. Sandy Hart resets. Here is Eldridge coming through. Eldridge got deflected wide. With three on three, there's so much open ice. Even stick plays you have to be careful of because you never know where it's deflecting to, and it's usually deflecting to a lot of open space. Eldridge lost her stick, came to the bench, got a new one before Boston could take advantage. And in fact, ended up just changing out. Mueller recycling, 3.33 to go in the overtime. Mueller is out there with Knight, and here is Di Girolamo coming in. Got one, Di Girolamo in. Comes all the way around to the near side. Sandy Hart closest to her. Was on that puck for a long while before Mueller will reset, as you see quite a bit in three on three. I thought Di Girolamo might have had a chance to slide to Knight, the trailer, as she brought that in. She had space, she had that back pass open. Here is Hillary Knight coming down the wall. Knight plays it across. Good save, Schroeder. What a stop on Di Girolamo. Alex Carpenter back the other way for New York. Sets up Bourbonnet, and Frankel is there. 
2.42 to go here in overtime. Bourbon ain't coming around. Momentarily lost the handle on the puck, but slides over to Carpenter. Been out there a long time in the overtime. She scores! Alex Carpenter wins it for New York. this finish in front of her family and friends in the crowd coming from North Reading to watch her here in this game. So though the home crowd might not be happy with the result, the fans that came here to support Alex Carpenter that you just had a chance to look at are excited to see her score here against Boston. And over time makes it a little bit more extra exciting as well. So Alex Carpenter, who came into this game tied for the PWHL lead in points, scoring her sixth goal of the season. I can't tell if this cleanly goes in or it, it hits Knight on the way through. It might have hit the stick. But she's such a pure shooter, goal scorer, that no, she beat her clean. She scored in overtime to win it last game. She did the same thing here to Boston.